you my story about Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica once in my life and I will never go there again. So I had some business in Jamaica. I was put in a very nice hotel. When you get to the hotel, they say, we have restaurants, we have clubs, we have everything inside the hotel. Don't leave the hotel. We have everything you want here. And it was fine for the first couple days, but after a while of seeing fat Americans overindulge in the buffet, going to this club, which was garbage, I'm sure you can imagine. You get pissed off with sitting in the golden prison and you decide to go and explore it for yourself. So I said, I'm in Jamaica. I'm gonna go find some actual Jamaican fun. I know some Jamaican brothers in London. They're a little bit crazy, but I don't know Jamaica's <laughs> a dangerous place, but whatever. I'm a dangerous guy. A bullet probably wouldn't kill me. Five might. Decide to go out exploring in Jamaica. So I go up to the reception and say, I need a taxi. Because what do you need a taxi for? I said, oh, I'm gonna go out and look around Jamaica. She goes, No, nah, don't don't do that. Stay in the hotel. We have we have bar in the hotel. I was like, no, no, no. So she wouldn't give me a taxi. So reception literally wouldn't order me a taxi. So I walk out, out the hotel, down the long road, all the way out to the main road. I think I'll find my own taxi. See a taxi, I wave, dude stops. I said, Bro, I'm gonna go, I wanna go have some fun. He goes, Get in the car, man, I'll show you around the island, we have fun. I was like, all right, cool. So I get in the car. He says, what's your name? I said, Andrew. I go, you? And he goes, Grim. I said, Grim? He goes, yeah, Grim Reaper. I started laughing. I was just like, ha, ha, ha. All right, Grim Reaper. Anyway, Grim's accent was so thick. He had that Jamaican accent, and he spoke in that patois. It was so thick, you, I couldn't understand the guy. He had this music on, this hard vibes cartel, do da 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 like loud music, and he's talking shit, and I have no idea what he's saying. So... He said, where do you want to go? And I'm like, bro, I want, I want a party. He's like, what kind of party? Do you like girls? Taxi drivers say, do you like girls? And when you say yes, they take you to strip clubs to get commission. Well, I also know Jamaica's super homophobic. So I can't say, no, I don't like girls. And I also don't want to go to Jamaican strip club. So I'm like, yeah, I like girls, but I don't want to go to a strip club. I want to go find some normal girls. <laughs> anyway, so he starts hey. ranting off. Blah, 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 talking, talking, talking. And he was driving like a idiot. <laughs> So I'm focusing on the road thinking, maybe I'm going to have to grab the wheel or some shit. So I'm to kill me. Talking shit. And when he finishes, he pulls out about 5,000 American from his fucking pocket. One of those pockets on his shirt. And he goes, you like that? I like money. So I was like, yeah, I like that. He goes, I party with you all night. So he pulls up at this club. We go in there. I am mixed race. I may as well have been Ed Sheeran up at this motherfucker. It was black. I'm not being racist, I'm saying it was black. The, the, the music was black, the lights were low, you couldn't see nobody's face, it was just black. Everyone in there probably had a gun. I'm standing there completely out of place. I walk in there and within precisely seven seconds I wanna go. And it took only seven seconds for Grim's stupid ass to order a bottle of Chivas Regal, which I don't even fucking drink. They brought the bottle over to me. I could see on the wall the price of the bottle, but the bill said double because I'm obviously too white for this place. And and Grim just hands me the bill while he opens up the bottle. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I pay for the bottle for Grim. He starts sipping away on this she bass. I'm sitting there, I'm standing up against the wall so no one can attack me from behind. Just looking at this club, thinking, not only do I not belong here, I'm definitely a little bit intimidated and there's definitely no fun for me here. There's no action for me here. But I don't want to just say to, to Grim, I'm going. Because I need him to drive me home. I don't know where to bam. There's no other taxis outside. So I have to let Grim have his fun. So we hung out for maybe 20 minutes. Grim's punk ass. And listen, if you're black and you're watching this, don't get offended. Black people can't drink. They all think they can drink. Black people can't drink. I live in Romania. I've gone to Russia. White people can drink. You can sit with a Russian man, do three bottles of vodka, it's fine. As soon as a fucking black person starts touching alcohol, they all start getting out of control and rowdy. That's why they can fight and shoot each other and shit. This motherfucker starts drinking his shit ass. He must have had about four or five drinks. Drunk out of his mind. So I say to him, look, Grim, let's go. Why you want to go to a party just starting, boy? I'm like, bruv, I didn't want to leave. I got to go back to my hotel, I got a meeting, start talking to some shit. Goes, okay, I take you to a better party. You don't like the party here, boy, I take you to a better party. I'm like, all right, Grim, let's go. As long as you get me the guy here, let's go. So we leave, we get in his car. Grim is drunk. Drunk as a motherfucker, driving like, putting his face closer to the road so he can see it back. That level of get drunk. Grim is hammered. So he's driving the car at like 15 miles an hour. You know Jamaicans think everything's slow. This motherfucker was going slow. I'm like, bro, just take me back to the hotel. I'm done with parties tonight. He goes, nah, boy, I think it's the best party on the island. Now it's late. It's party time now. You go out at 10 o'clock. Now it's midnight. Now it's party time. Then all this shit. I was like, all right, fine. Fuck it. Take me. Fine, whatever. 
So we're in this car, we're driving, we're driving. Anyway, we start driving up this dirt hill. We're driving up this hill for like 10 minutes. Dirt track hill in the middle of the forest on both sides. And it, I didn't clock instantly. Maybe it's because I had a few drinks. But then I clocked and thought, this motherfucker's about to rob me. There's no club up here. I'm about to get robbed. I mean, me and Mr. Stupid wearing my fucking nice watch and shit. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm about to get robbed. I've been robbed before. You know, like I'm a professional athlete. I can fight, but also I know my limitations. You want to take my shit? Take my shit. Whatever. I don't care. I'll buy new shit. Anyway, so I was like, he's in a wrong me. So I was like, Grim, where are we going, bro? We're not going to no fucking club. I ain't stupid. He goes, I didn't see a club, boy. I said a party. And that kind of gave me, you know what? That actually made me feel a little bit better when he said it. I thought, maybe there is a party out here. Maybe I'm freaking out. So we get up to the top of this hill. And it was a party. This was Grim's party. It was two rickety-ass street lamps, dimly lighting on clearing in this forest. There was an old dude sitting on a cooler. There was a shitty old beatbox from 1988. And there was about 20 Jamaican dudes. No girl. That's it. That's the party. Grim goes, we're here. I was like, Grim, let's go. And before I could even say, let's, this is shit, take me home. He'd already stepped out the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so what can you do? What can you, you can't just sit in the car like a bitch. Everyone's looking at you now because, you know, you've driven up to this park. Everyone's staring at you, so... Get out the fucking car. What else are you going to do? So I get out of the car. I must have got out of the car about four seconds after Grim. And within those three or four seconds, Grim had vanished. Grim is now gone. Like a ghost into the fucking night. I look around and I cannot see Grim. So it's just me at this part. I'm like, okay. So there's, I'm kind of like, well, where do I stand? What do I do? There's this shed, this shitty shed. And I'm, I have the same philosophy everywhere I go. I don't want to be attacked from behind. You're going to kill me and at least see it coming. So I decide to go stand up against the shed. Or go stand up against the shed. I'm standing there trying to pretend I'm just like chilling. And all the dudes are looking at each other and then looking at me. And Jamaicans, they're not subtle. Jamaicans are not subtle people at all. So they made it very clear what they were doing. They were asking, who knows this guy? Can I rob him? Like, is he a police? Who the fuck is this dude? So they're like, da, 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 him, him, you know? Who, da, da. like, literally being super obvious. Who the fuck is, if he's your friend, if I shoot him, are you going to be mad? So everyone's talking to each other about me. I'm just sitting there, and obviously as a professional athlete, especially in fighting, you get a poker face. That's your whole job is you have a poker face. So I sit here and thought, my only thing I can do is keep the poker face on. I have to pretend I don't give a fuck. There's these two dudes, the two biggest guys. I'm six foot three and a half. These dudes must be about six five, both of them. Wearing the string vests, lean like me, built. They start talking, and they're the ones who are most overtly pointing at me and like checking if you know I'm, I'm, I'm okay to be a target. I can't say for 100% certain, but I will say with 99% certainty, there was a pistol in his belt. Did someone say, would you bet your life on it? I'd say, yeah, there's a pistol in his belt. So I knew this is an unwinnable fight. So I was like, okay. My plan is this. While I was looking at his belt and the pistol, someone started walking down the hill. So I said to myself, next time someone starts walking down the hill, I'm just going to walk with that person and pretend I know that person. And if I can convince that one person not to kill me, then that lowers my odds. Instead of having to convince everyone not to kill me, I was convinced one guy and I'll kill So next time someone leaves, I'm walking down the hill. These two dudes are about to attack me. Anyway, I'm literally looking at the hill and thinking that's my plan. And I hear, yo, and I turn to the side to see grim. And he stinks of weed. Stinking of weed out of his fucking mind. He goes to me, you having fun, boy? I was like, no, I said, it's all right. I need to get back. I've got people waiting for me. You know, the typical basic tricks. He goes, you want the taxi home? I was like, yeah. He goes, a thousand. A thousand Jamaican. Remember, I paid this guy 10 Jamaican dollars. That's what, like three bucks to get this far. He goes, no, a thousand American dollar. I leave you here with my boys. So it was all a big setup from the beginning. I said, my friend, I've got about $700 on me. I spent the rest on your shivas. He goes, I'll tell you what. I take you home for $700. I wait outside. You bring me the other 300 or you never make it off to me. I look him in the eyes. I said, Grim, you motherfucker. I said, you know what? Deal. We get back in the car. It wasn't even animosity. We get back in the car. It was like men understand the reality of the world. I can't be mad at Grim. Grim does what Grim does. I walked into it. I get back in the car. He goes to me. Now, he goes, the party not finished for me, boy. Starts putting music on. He's my friend again. Everything's fine. We go back to the hotel. And I thought, okay, I'm at the hotel now. I cannot pay him. I can see him call the police. I can be a little bitch. Like most white boys would do. That's what a white boy would do. You know what? I have honor. Grim, he pulled a scam. 
and it worked. And he did save me from basically getting my brains blown out. So I thought, you know what, Grim, here's 700. He said, do you want the other 300? I'll go get it if you want it. And Grim turned to me and goes, don't worry about it. Like, That's enough. Have a, good, have a good time in Jamaica. He's like, thank you. Well, the end of the story is this. I had one of the guys who cleaned my room. And every time he cleaned my room, because I was in an all-inclusive, unlimited alcohol, I'd give him all the alcohol for my room because they'd refill it for free. So I'd say, take all the beer, take all the vodka, it's yours. I don't care because they refill it. And what surprised me, he goes, no one's ever done this for me before. I work here 10 years. It's like, it's free. Why the fuck would I care? Because people are stingy and stupid. Because I'm not. So this guy, I told him my story. He goes, you are the luckiest man in Jamaica. He goes, you don't know. They kill tourists because if they get caught robbing a tourist, they do the same time as murder. They always kill tourists. They would have definitely buried you in the ground. No one find you for years. They never let you go and give police support. You're the luckiest man in the world. I never am going to Jamaica. 